Languages to music. Languages to music. Languages to music. Languages to music. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Languages Through Music podcast. And I am so excited today to welcome someone I consider to be Eritrea's Oprah, although she may protest. Mary Magdalene, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having me, but hey, that is that. Oprah. Oprah is Come on. Eritrea's Oprah is is just the beginning. (laughs) Businesswoman, philanthropist, entrepreneur, media like mogul, running the Mary show, millions of hits on Desta TV, just recently nominated for the National Diversity Awards for being a positive role model in the category of race, faith, religion. I could go on and on, but we only have a short time for this podcast. So, if, <laughs> if Mary, if you disagree with me, how would you present yourself? Uh, by the way, guys, I paid her. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know where this is coming from. <laughs> Thank you, honestly. Honestly, I am so happy to be here with you, by the way. Super, super excited. And more excited because I know I have mentioned this to you, but your dad is one of the people that prophesied over our childhood. Mm. And I am here because of that prophecy. Okay. So it's, it's an honor and privilege to be here and just talking to you. So, I mean, Alona, 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 Alona. I um, <laughs> here with my with my Akologzai sister. We probably, I'm sure, if we talked a bit longer, we'd find some relative, some connection. Hundred percent. And now that I, I now that I've got my uh, age, this kind of generational <laughs> family tree. <laughs> we might be related, girl. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to find my family tree. We're gonna find this connection. We're going yes, to this yes. <laughs> I mean, I can't deny because how can you have a typewriter and I have a typewriter in my house? <laughs> you know, exactly. And that's just the beginning. That's just our yeah. first interview. And I'm, and it's a, a major honor for me to be interviewing the mother of interviews. How many interviews do you think you've carried out? Oh, all right. Um, okay. Thanks for doing this. Okay. Thanks for putting me on the spot. I'm a banker, but I don't really count my interviews. Okay. <laughs> but I would say roughly hundreds, one hundred twenty-five or so more. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. I've been privileged. I have been privileged, honestly. Well, it's a privilege to have you here today, and you know, I think also because you do so many different things i really wanted to get your take on languages and music and how that connects for you because you're a communicator in everything that you do you're communicating and you do it in tigrinya in english uh, do you speak other languages as well um i do so i speak amharic uh i've learned it when i came to the uk by the way so yeah. <clears throat> Uh, I, I speak a little bit Italian mm-hmm. and Arabic, Amazing. but I'm super, super fluent in Tigrinya. <laughs> Absolutely. I dream for my Tigrinya to be fluent like yours one day. One day. That would be so great. What is your earliest music memory? Wow. <clears throat> you know what? <clears throat> you just mentioned about communication and how amazing communication is right as a tool but we really give and receive in life through music right Mm -hmm. and the first communication that i remember through music is from my mother Mm -hmm. right like mothers play music for and sing to their children as you know in the womb i mean the minute you know they start talking to us even if it's normal talk they start humming especially Eritrean mothers you know Mm. They, you know, they, they have, they're having while they're doing stuff. So 
that's what music means for me in terms of communication. The first thing mm-hmm. that my mother communicated to me as a child was through music, you know? Lullabies, teaching, sure, sure. Mm-hmm. Do you do you know what your first word was? Oh my goodness. <laughs> I'm laugh at my mom. But it's definitely dad. I mean, <laughs> that is her yeah. first entries. My mom would get upset. So every time I used to call back home when my dad was alive, I'll call my dad, right? And then I'll mm-hmm. speak here and my mom would be like, oh, I mean, you know, thank God she called you. Otherwise, we wouldn't have the opportunity to speak, of speaking to her <laughs> at any chance. So, I I mean, I think it should be dad. Oh, that's so sweet. Mm-hmm. Do you have, who are your, your favorite artists in Tigrinya? Either of all time you know people that you've loved listening to since childhood or maybe who you're listening to now oh lord (laughs) or or even a even a top three i need to still interview artists in eritrea okay (laughs) yeah of course but i've seen you interview musicians uh on your show i'm sure Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh okay so i mean any Eritrean, the ultimate ones is like Abraham of work and Yamanabara, right? Yeah. I mean, they, they gotta be the ultimate one, and especially Yamanabara. Um, because he advocates for fairness, he advocates for justice, he's very nationalist, mm-hmm. he is his his music and lyrics have lived through centuries for over 60 years. Mm-hmm. And people, young people, even like 12 to 13 years old, they still vibe and ham to his music because the message resonates with every generation. And that's super rare. So Yamanabara, nothing tops up like Yamanabara on my charts, but then Abraham of work also mm-hmm. because he advocates for love, harmony, and, and the way he describes his love songs and the way he described women he describes the love of a country the love of the mother love of community and that 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 music and the the way they you know kind of put their message across you know at yeah. times when people when times were not convenient for them to you know declare the love they have for their country at that time because Eritrea was not an independent country especially for Yamanabara right Mm -hmm. so this is why I love them and this is the people I jam with most of the time yeah Yeah, I think it's really one of the reasons I love using music and language teaching too because when people are learning it's not just the language but especially with artists like Abraham Afuerki and Yamanabara it's history it's poetry it's you know, a geography lesson. It's a lesson in culture. It's a lesson in so much more than than just the communication. So those yeah. are definitely two giants of all giants. Wow. Yeah. Um, what are any words in Tigrinya that you tend to use the most? What are what are any sayings or ex- expressions that you use a lot? <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> Anedo. <laughs> And I got this from my mom, right? Oh. <laughs> um, yeah. Gualdevasaido. <laughs> Gualdevasaido. That's so cute. <laughs> say this because my mom said this. Ana <laughs> Gualdevasaido. So when I, I don't use it on my daily database, but when I'm talking to mom and I want to make her smile, I, I say that like, Ana Gualdevasaido. And she's like, all right, okay, I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I think really when I'm with my my family, especially in in D.C., where I have a lot of family, there are just words that you hear all the time or even sounds like even just the sound. But like, I just love that whenever I hear that, I just feel like. Yeah, yeah. I like that. But what? Yeah, it says so much. It sounds up everything for you. Yeah, 
<laughs> and just and just how you can change the tone like angry and, or yeah. entertain the music yeah. so funny it's, it's it's lovely actually but yeah but <laughs> it's it's but. one of my friends one of my um little cousins in in dc you know half half the family grew lived in addis and half lived in asmara and so she made up a little song and it went in day but in day but oh <laughs> it was so cute was very creative it was yeah very creative using these kind of two multi-purpose sounds in amharinya and tigrinya and she was only like seven wow Belula. so wow. funny so when you were a kid which languages were you speaking at home speaking at school uh optionally learning at school you said you learned amharic when you got to the uk so yeah. what was your experience with language classes language teachers wow um of course having um born and raised in the capital city it was the green year mm -hmm. i opened my mouth with my mother language which is the green year yes called asmara <laughs> asmarina asmarina yeah and um <clears throat> so that was mainly it until i get to sixth grade where we had to learn english as a second language right at school mm -hmm. and after that i was learning arabic as extra class and then i was learning italian as an extra class so mm -hmm. in the and I love language, right? Like, I, I, I mean, as you mentioned, I, I'm a communicator and I, I believe and language plays a vital role on expressing yourself, whether it be the way you are speaking, the way you are talking or the way you put your words across. I mean, a culture or a community is as rich as its language mm -hmm. you know? and how diverse or multi-dimensional that language is you know like mm -hmm. people say the hebrew language is the most richest language because you can describe one thing in over 20 different characteristics right mm -hmm. and after that is of course other languages but even our gears you know yeah. Like mm -hmm. we are so proud and very, very, you know, articulate in our mother language because of the authenticity of our language and how indigenous it is to us. Mm, and having you know? the script, especially. Yes, having mm. the script to us. And that's the main reason why whenever we travel and we go to like the diaspora, we find it so hard to let go of our <laughs> culture, our music, mm. the way we dress. It's because it's encrypted, you know? It's, yeah. it's encrypted in our blood. Mm -hmm. And the reason why it has resonated for quite so long is because of the culture, the richness on it. So, which is good, which is mm -hmm. Tukwina. And then over the other languages kind of follow around that. But yeah, I opened my mouth with Tukwina, if that answers your question yeah more than answers my question more i think it's beautiful yeah a culture and community being as rich as its language and that definitely being encrypted in the blood i remember anywhere we lived yeah. somehow my dad would find in Jeddah, like within mm -hmm. days of us being there whether it was in the caribbean or oh, west wow. africa or he would just find he would just find the community you know before internet and before mobile phones wherever because we kept we moved around a lot when i grew up and yes uh he just would find the the eritrean community within minutes in any country wow. <laughs> so so, it's, it's, it's Barbara, so I'm Dr. Rissa, okay. Away. So, <laughs> did music ever help you learn one any of these languages? Yes, of course. Which, 100%. Yeah, which, which, any in particular, any songs or artists in particular? Okay, so I have basically completed my language course in Amharic in the UK, but initially, 
how I started learning, oh my God, how I actually started learning Amharic was from back home. So my cousins, you know, remember the Eritrean war in 1997 and people mm -hmm. were, they were, and Amitya were coming to Eritrea. Mm -hmm. That's when I first started because talking in Amharic with my cousins because they didn't know how to speak in Tigrinya and I didn't know how to speak in Amharic. So what yeah. we had to do was like, I had to just find a way of communicating with them. Mm -hmm. But obviously, because we're in Eritrea, we were trying so hard for them to learn Tigrinya because that's what they wanted to do so badly in order for them to, you know, integrate with the community, True. right? But a friend of mine had this book, right? And it was not, oh my goodness, the books, some of the pages were missing. It was mm -hmm. kind of an old book, but it, it had Amharic on it. And I was studying it every, like, at break time, I would study, this is me, like, third, fourth grade. This is me, fourth grade, or third grade, okay? And I was just trying to learn Amharic from the book. But then you can't really go far. So what helped me was the music, you know, Asterawak mm -hmm. music, you know, Ephraim Tam music. It was super easy. So when you listen to it, you ask people, oh, my God, what does he mean when he say, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The most Amharinya I picked up was from music as well. Mahmoud Ahmad, Tamrat Desta. <gasps> oh my goodness, he was my ultimate. Okay, oh. Tamrat Desta. Hakimenish <laughs> <laughs> Medanite. No, 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 no. no what? So funny. <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm born again Christian, right? So my family are born again Christian, and growing up music as in like cult like circular music was kind of like oh listen mesmer listen mesmer right <laughs> yeah i never felt <laughs> he was a circular music because <laughs> because of the message he you, you do you know what i mean yeah it's yeah, yeah it's about him describing the way he loved the woman him trying and yeah and my mom was like okay <laughs> you banned from this <laughs> you and Tamrat Desta are banned from this house. <laughs> yes, <laughs> both of us on the same day. <laughs> but that's the power of music, though. Yeah, I think he even mentions Adam and Eve in that song. Uh, How can yes, I, so I can. I, I can really get away with that song, right? Adam, we want that shit. Adam. Oh, he's great. He's such a tune, my goodness. I love Tamrat this time. I too. love him. Me too. Yes. You know, I was amazed when I went to, last time I went to Addis, I visited the Holy Trinity Church and they have, you know, the graves of a lot of the Tila uh, Hungesese, Tamrat Desta, a lot of the famous singers. And the graves are amazing. Like, uh, they have, you know, carvings of the instruments they have for life-size statues of the artists with microphones with music notes it's just incredible oh wow, wow. yeah i might it's, visit it yeah time. it's really the per the perfect resting place for for incredible artists oh. when, when you travel which i guess hasn't been so much in the past year like everybody else do you find it easy to pick up you know the basics in other languages um yeah because i'm i'm a type of person like i would go to the market and know how to buy water regardless <laughs> <laughs> whether it's me trying to like put my like language signs you know like move my hands and stuff mm. Or try to ask people, right? Say, how do I know how to say thank you? Mm -hmm. And how do I know, like, what do I say when I want to say you're beautiful or you're gorgeous? Because nobody would really hate to be called beautiful or gorgeous. <laughs> That's not to be honest, I right? never thought about that, but that is a really great thing to learn. First, really? Kunjo. We do traveler as well, so I, I, that would really come to you second nature. Uh, I mean, yeah, I love, you know, picking up no please thank you hi how are you but i never thought of learning to say you know how important it is to say you're beautiful and that's true because yeah, yeah. everybody's can, happy to hear that yes and you can flirt with both the girls and the guys equally <laughs> not in a bad way but like do you know what i mean like in yeah. a positive way yeah konjo. Yeni konjo. yeah see <laughs> <laughs> but, 
fantastic. Well, I really hope that we're able to travel again soon and see each other in person soon. I cannot wait. That would be so, so nice. Is there music that you listen to that you don't understand the lyrics of, but you love the language, you love the sound of it, like salsa or Brazilian music or South African music? Are there different styles that appeal to you even though you don't speak the language? Look. I am guilty of French music. Yeah. I have no idea what the heaven that, that I have no Komura, no Komura. Wait, wait. I am no. I am. I am Nakamura. I don't know what the heaven this woman is saying, <laughs> but I'll be singing her song 24 <laughs> What have I done to her? <laughs> yeah, she's great. Oh my god do you know any message that she say um i don't know her songs that well i think one of them is about how some guy is always flirting with her best looking friends oh. and uh <laughs> oh <my> god, okay <laughs> yeah i have to i have to take a better listen but i'm going to send you the french through music ebook uh okay. and i think i think there's a an aya nakamura song on there too so i will send you some french tunes i mean please do i i i, I love it and <laughs> afro music any in particular every single of them no <laughs> i don't even know what davido is saying yeah I'm talking to that guy yeah 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 it's great oh so, yeah afro bit is big on my list these days like super big oh. and of course spaniola and then french like i said i don't even know what the heaven the ladies say <laughs> but it's the heaven awesome. if would french be if you were to learn a new language now would french be the first the first on your list nowadays yes hmm. How, how, what I want to know one day is how you organize your time. Cause you do more than 99.9% .9 of people I know. Oh my goodness. Are we going to that? No, 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 I'm not putting you on the spot. I'm just saying one day when we're having a coffee somewhere in the world, I'm going to ask you the secrets of how you manage your time because it's very it. inspiring, especially for, I mean, I've spent this whole lockdown, you know, taking language classes and teaching. And I, if I had your time management skills, I might speak like 50 languages. Oh my Jesus. <laughs> oh my God. Now that, okay, now I need to do my homework <laughs> and complete one extra language by next year. Okay. No, you are, you are running a, a multi-million hit TV <laughs> show, a TV station and your own talk show and and a beauty startup and okay. Bella Lounge. Yes. <laughs> you are a superwoman, Mary, for real. So thank you so much for making time for talking. Be kind, sister. This evening. Of course, anytime, honestly. And uh, how how long can people keep voting for you for the National Diversity Awards? Oh my goodness. It's until the fourth of july hey, 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 hey. fourth of june and oh my god can i say this you can say that, anything um, people in the community people my friends people like you i was surprised within three days almost over 300 people have already voted of and course me. and i'm like really and it's and, and you know what it was i i almost like was just i was crying no. but happy tears because yeah the the message they were writing for the reason why they were nominating me i never realized because when i started it this time i just said you know what even if one person could change his or her life after watching that start interview mm. right that's a win-win for me let alone like five point whatever million people for mm -hmm. just on the line but it was a humble beginning because i never had someone telling me mary go here do this don't mm -hmm. do that don't talk to this you know what i mean 
at that time so what I, what i was trying to do was just really bring in the good out of people so that other people they don't feel left out they don't mm -hmm. feel they don't matter anymore because they're refugees or they don't feel because they don't feel valued because of their skin care the skin their skin tone they don't feel valued because they speak different language or their accent was not you know traditionally good enough for mm -hmm. the, the caliber of people within the community you know mm -hmm. so but i mean i am so humbled so grateful so yeah the vote the vote the voting is still open until 4th of june and they'll be telling us uh, about the final nominees uh, around july time amazing well you deserve it you really built you built up a really inspiring inclusive warm oh thank you empire through your communications you know through through your over a hundred interviews i mean millions and millions of people have felt seen or heard or like they had a a space you know uh mm -hmm. in in the media in your shows in uh in the world so i'm really really honored to be able to talk to a a master communicator and connector because that's really what what Thanks. inspires me with languages through music is being able to mm. help people yes. uh, communicate and connect and connect languages with music and cultures and and people and uh, and you are uh, people I majorly admire Mary so oh. But really for everything you're doing and for for making time to chat this evening Thank oh, you so much. The, the pleasure is all mine and all back at you honestly <laughs> and you. when i when i see you in person i'm gonna make sure you have all the the copies of my my dad's books too i'm so glad that he inspired you yes and then if you don't mind please please can before we leave can i just play your dad's lyrics for one more time because oh, is that okay of course, Please, of course. I, I, I have it here i'm gonna play it of course it's it, honestly he when he was saying alona alona right he was you know what i mean he was giving the community hope mm -hmm. and the you know belief on the next generation Mm -hmm. when he there's nothing to see around yeah, yeah. so know? for those anybody listening who who doesn't know alona alona is we have we have in tirinya and the poem is like a, a list of of all the the wonderful things that eritrea has yes and yes so dr rasam haile we love you uh, mm -hmm. wherever you are just know that we appreciate that No, thank you so much. Yes, and I'm going to play that. I don't know who's on Amen. <laughs> Thank you so much. Dafen <laughs> nan So deep. I mean, if you think, I mean, honestly, because he's talking about justice, he's talking about leadership, he's talking about community, he's talking about love, he's mm. talking about hope and faith on the next generation, and which is as right. Allah mm -hmm. na And Alona. Alona, it's us. It's <laughs> us. And we're here together. 
Yes. And it's such an honor, Mary. Thank you so much. It's so nice. What a what a what a way to flip the interview to play his voice. Whoa, my heart. Thank you. Yeah. I know. Just <laughs> you know, just you know, like in my in our culture, this is what I want us to do forever. We need to give credit to whom credit credit is owed. Mm -hmm. and these are the people that have been pioneers in believing on the next generation when mm -hmm. other people are working so hard to degrade and dismantle the confidence on this generation definitely i'll just leave at that and you are well on your way to to building a legacy that is going to last for many, many generations. Amen, amen, in the name of Jesus. Many amen. generations. <laughs> amen. Mary, I love you. Thank you so much. I love you and I wish you all the best. Thank you so much. It's a privilege and honor to meet you because you're a daughter of my superhero. Okay. Oh, thank you, Mary. I'm oh, going to cry. Okay. <laughs> Be proud. I and am proud. Me. I am. I am. <laughs> Be proud. <laughs> and um, yeah, I love you so much. And I can't wait to see you soon. Uh, me too. Lots of love, Mary. See you in London very, very soon. Yes. God bless you. God bless. Amen. <laughs> thank you. Oh my goodness. Okay, are we are, are we <laughs> prophesizing on my award now? Yes, well, I'm I'm telling you now that you're going to win the 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 National Diversity Awards. It's a fact. And then I'm going to if I want it, I promise I'll be having <laughs> on the stage like no shame, like no, no shame. <laughs> We'll all be there. Lililing for you. Languages to music.